I really like the idea of cosplay. It's always appealed to me. I really appreciate that people are going out in their garages and just like putting glue to foam and making stuff. And if I can help push their creativity further, it would be my dream. My name is Ben Bayuth, and I am the creative director of Buddy Builds at Stupid Buddy Studios. I am a professional prop costume and puppet maker. League of Legends has been a source of inspiration of mine for a long time. I always appreciated the aesthetic of it and the character design. Riot Games approached me and they asked if I would collaborate with a cosplayer to make a large scale build. My name is Brett Horn and I'm a professional stilt walker with the cosplay group for g Tasty Cosplay. Riot Games approached me and said if there were no limitations, what would you make? That's where Brett's crazy mind came in and said, let's make a huge thresh so that it looks like he's holding a small person inside of a lantern. I've been performing for many years. I've made some very large puppets. I've worked in some very large puppets, but even then, I've never built anything on this scale. 13 feet? It's pretty crazy. A lot of my job on this is just making sure that everything moves well and that the people who are moving it are comfortable. The aesthetics and the building is something that I'm very familiar with, but what the real challenge is, is making that a comfortable thing to wear or as comfortable as it can be so that you can get the best movement out of it. Now, the mechanism in itself is its own challenge because we want to keep all the weight onto Brett's back and hips. So what I've designed is a counterweight system using bungees that alleviates some of the weight from the arms and shoulders and the hips that allows Brett to really freely move. And if I have you know, 180 pounds of weight on his shoulders, that's just not gonna, that's not gonna be good. We're making a one quarter scale sculpture of Thresh. Every single part of it will be able to pop off so we can pull patterns off of it. This is Thresh's right gauntlet. And this is the piece that we'll be pulling our patterns off of. So it's uh, meticulously sectioned out into planes so that when we pattern it, we can make every plane its own piece of foam. I'm Jake Corrick. I am a sculptor and creature designer. So basically, it's my job to get all the clay pieces to make sure that this thing actually looks like Thresh in these early stages. This is the skull that's going to be sitting directly on Thresh's back, almost like it's guarding his back. We have to caliper very carefully, because if we are off on our one quarter scale patterning, it gets blown up to a full scale, that mess up is that much larger. What I really like about the team that we're putting together is not only are Brett and his team builders, but they're performers. So they can say, hey, this doesn't work, or what if this moved better? And that's all insight that isn't valuable, that isn't usually at your fingertips when you're building a costume. My name's Tara Spadero. My background is actually primarily performing and stilt walking. I used to sculpt as a kid for fun, but I've never actually done work as a professional sculptor. So this is actually a huge learning process for me, and it's super exciting. Tara has an amazing background in puppetry, but she also just has a super positive attitude that she just brings the whole room up. The top of the lantern alone has 100 pattern pieces to it. This is the pieces of Thresh's lantern we have here. So you can see that there's different planes that, that uh, they've created. The reason that we only have to pattern one side is because we can then take that pattern of that half and pattern its mirror image to get the, the other half of whatever we're patterning at the particular time. We've estimated somewhere around 1,400 individual pieces. Each piece is covered with tape so that we can cut these pieces off, scan them in, and blow them up large scale so we can cut them out of foam and put it all back together, quadruple the size. Life-size thresh. So yesterday we had a group high five celebrating the, uh, the putting to sleep of the patterns. The team dynamic has been awesome. It's a rare opportunity you get to come together with awesome people to make awesome things. It was no longer like my crew and their crew. It definitely just became the Thresh crew. My name is Adam Beasley. I am a sculptor slash fabricator. And uh, Brett Horn asked me, hey, how would you like to build an enormous monster? And I, I come from a, a history of monster making. And uh, thusly, we are piecing together this big, bad, nasty. And I'm very fortunate to be a part of it. Adam is someone who I can always rely on. If I can't figure it out, I can lock heads with Adam, and we'll figure it out. Past couple weeks, we've been patterning all these pieces and gluing them together. We spent a huge amount of time gluing the pieces. There was about 1,300 pieces, and we have a little more to go. We have most of these done, but there's a couple that we have to completely make from scratch. It's so almost a total of two weeks of sanding. There's so many parts that come together. Just sand the whole thing down and make it look good, you know? My name is Zach Jones. Zach is the master of repetitive tasks. If you need something done 50 times, 
perfectly the same way. My guy Zach's gonna do it and he's not gonna complain about it. And you know, it's so important to have someone like that on the team. This is a cuticle cutter and I'm using it to cut glue, the cuticle of the bone. This tool is called a rasp and it essentially works the same way that a cheese grater does. The sandpaper is great after you use the rasp to really take, take it in with the sandpaper and refine the piece. A combination of sandpaper, a heat gun is really useful because it makes the surface of the foam constrict and smooth. There has been challenges every single day, and I think each of us can attest to that. We all kind of get to teach each other in a way, and we all learn together. I don't know how many of us had to recut certain pattern pieces, recut them simply because a single bevel was wrong. You literally have two prepared glued up barge pieces that you're kissing together, and literally as you get the final stretch and you made it work, you realize it's the wrong piece in the wrong place. Right when I start feeling comfortable with it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm getting it, we have a new challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest challenge of this project in particular is staying true to the Thresh style. Yet we have all risen, huzzah. A lot of the things that are going on with this particular character I have done before, but none of which I have come together in this particular way. There's a moment where you go through and you're like, oh no, it's all wrong. Oh wait, it's really cool. And then you start to put things together and there's one particular moment where it's the first time that you've seen all these different elements you've made come together. And you're just like, this is real. I'm making this and it's gonna work. The skill set that challenged me the most was airbrushing. But you did get it and it looks great. Like you don't, you can't tell what you airbrushed and what Jake airbrushed and what I airbrushed. That's a huge compliment. Totally. I mean, I did go back in at night when you guys weren't there and we touched everything, but... Uh... Oh, good. good. I figured you did. <laughs> well, today, Ben and I finished up the gauntlet painting, which is pretty dynamic. It's like this electro-phantasmic frostiness that just sort of erupts from the hands and goes all the way up the gauntlets. And then, Master Jake and I jumped on boot duty, where we hammered out some metallic loveliness, one pound at a time. But now, unfortunately, we must clean the airbrush for it has become gunked with acrylic naughtiness. There's so much left to do that we're constantly just going, and there's really not much downtime. Brett and Ben came up to me, and they're like, cool, uh, can you make a pair of pants? It's like, never done it. Tara is the one who primarily made the actual pattern for these pants. And so I pretty much went from never having made pants to making giant pants. And today I'm taking them in at the kneecap, less fabric, less weight. So that's a lot of hand stitching. It's a good way to learn to make pants, just make giant ones. As far as timeline goes, we are now in crunch time. It's less than a week away now, and we're pretty excited about it. I'm so excited to be a part of the process that gives a fan the experience that I have loved so much as a kid. To bring the fans an actual moment where they feel like they interacted with a character that they have only interacted with through a screen. Now they're gonna be face to face with this character that was not real to them in the flesh. It's a pretty rewarding thing to see people's faces when something is so believable in front of them and that I'm excited to experience at PAX. And then once everything's on, we go, okay, clear. Hey, Thresh. And he just comes to life. And there's that moment where everyone around him just goes, oh, and sits back. And they just all become 10 years old again. There's a really magical moment there that I think we're getting every single time you get in the suit. It's so incredibly energizing. We're going to move you guys over to the queue over here. And one at a time, we'll get you inside the lantern and get a really cool picture of you guys with Thresh. You know, Brett will see someone who sees him, and they're, like, enchanted by him. He's like, target, and he'll just run at him. And everyone just goes, like, ah. And you just evoke such emotion that is uh, really hard to do with just like a statue or something. There's something dark and mysterious about him. There's something creepy about him, but there's this like arrogant attitude to him. I think it comes down to him being extremely iconic and the idea of being iconic.
been creating and performing for many years, and this is by far one of the absolutely coolest things I've ever done.